so going back to uh, Piker, Voxbox, and this time Easy. Easy is just like, uh, you know, absentmindedly like cleaning the dirt off his guns and stuff, and seems to be in another world completely. While Voxbox is like fussing over your bandages, Piker, and he just sort of looks at you and uh, takes some of the bandages off your face and starts uh, wrapping fresh ones around it and says, uh, "Well, you're not as pretty as you were before, Piker, but you know the ladies—they love the scars." We can always hope. He just sort of uh, laughs and says, Well, better you than me, anyway. At least you're good for a beat shield when push comes to shove. <laughs> he just uh, sort of, like, finishes bandaging you and slaps you on the shoulder and says, uh, If you don't mind, I think I'm going to go have a conversation with our uh, brave uh, temporary conductor and uh, see if he knows where the hell, you know, bloody hell the Emperor is taking us. You do that. I'm going to sleep. He just sort of laughs and says, yeah, of course you are. And he just sort of walks off, chuckling to himself. And Easy just sort of, like, turns to you out of nowhere and, uh, set, like, looks at you dead in the eye, Piker, and just says, I like Foxbox. Me too. I like Torridus. I, <laughs> I like Train. I like Lamp. And then Easy says, I also like Fett. And then he just sort of, like, looks at Fett and says, but Fett wants bananas. And then he just sort of like looks sad for a minute and says, "We don't have any bananas." And then he falls asleep. I have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> so, uh, you hear a knock on the door to your uh, control room uh, lock, and turning around, you see Voxbox like uh, grinning at you, and he comes in and says, "All right, lock." Uh, so you wouldn't happen to know where in the fatting hell you were going exactly, would you? Well, this this thing's on tracks. I follow the tracks. You just sort of back to where we came or where we're going. He just sort of looks at you dead in the eye and says, "Well, that's uh, hopeful." And he just sort of uh, comes up and has a look at the uh, machines and like the layouts in front of you. And he sort of scratches his chin and says, "None of these have any sort of map at all, do they?" Uh, I can try and tech use it. <laughs> yeah. I want to verbally say that to him. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Hold on, let me just tech use this. Take out some <laughs> dice and roll. And it's like, I don't know. Nope. No maps whatsoever. He just scratches his chin and starts looking him over. And you know, he's clearly getting confused. And he says... Well, I was never too savvy with this thing, even back on Thermos, they just had me uh, chucking away with a hydraulic miner. I just about knew how to work that, and he just sort of uh, looks back at you and says, Look, uh, for Emperor's sake, just don't crash us into anything, alright? Yeah, i got fast reactions. I can I can put a stop to this movement if uh, something's on the tracks. He's like, uh, smiles, he's like, good man, good man, and he just sort of like walks out, and you hear him say under his breath, and he's like, it's not that I don't believe you can stop, it's that I just hope you want to, and he sort of starts walking off. I, I, like, push the power up slightly and down a little bit and back up to uh, full speed, so it does a jerk as he goes through the door. <laughs> yeah, and he, like, stumbles a bit, and then laughs as he starts walking off. He comes up to you, Fett, and, like, just, like, slaps you on the shoulder and goes, Hey, Fett, big man, uh, hell of a fight, eh? Right, uh, uh, have you seen any bananas? And he just sort of looks at you dead in the eyes and goes, Fett, we're on the train, there's no bananas. I was promised bananas. <laughs> he just sort of looks at you and says, uh, Well, you're best going to take that up with whoever promised you those bananas, big man. He just sort of slips by you and sort of makes like the, you know, cuckoo sound with his like uh, mouth as he like twirls his fingers around thinking you're alone and he just sort of walks off. Well, he's a weird one. Yeah, he slides in beside Easy and Piker, who are now asleep, and uh, also like starts to nod off himself. Slowly unzip my flies. <laughs> Start furiously <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> How many flies like, do you have? I, 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 seven, in dude. my trousers. I'm unzipping the front zip of my trousers. Got a banana so... for you, Fed. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, Fett just snatches it right off. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> uh, it's a little bit tiny, but it'll do. 
it's a plantain. <laughs> Wait, those are the small ones. Chops on it. <laughs> so like the hours are going by pretty uh pretty like long and judging. It's been like maybe four or five hours on the train and there seems to be no end in sight to this maglev line. You've gone by one or two ruined stations that don't seem to lean to anywhere. And after a while, uh, Angel sort of uh, climbs down the uh, ladder from the back carriage and sort of like walks by. So, you know, she sees most of you asleep. Uh, I don't know if Fed is asleep or is he's just like sitting on his ass, like looking for bananas. Uh, yeah, he like eventually takes like tears four of the seats off and makes like a little bed. <laughs> All right. Uh, so she comes up and uh, she like salutes to you, Thermite and Sentinel, and just says, uh, "Sirs, uh, I f we finished a triage of the wounded. If you'd like to hear the report of casualties and fatalities." Yeah, I, I look at her. She's probably dead tired, and I point at the seat. Yeah, she's exhausted and she's got like blood up to her arms, and she just sort of uh, smiles when you point to the seat, and she sits down and starts like. Uh, she takes it like a wet wipe from her uh, bag and like starts wiping it off like with disinfectant and uh, sort of looks to you and says, uh, Sergeant uh, Parks, the squad is down to half strength. Uh, one of them is wounded, but we don't expect him to survive. He took a pretty heavy hip to the liver. And it looks like he's experiencing, uh, well, full systematic failure. We expect he'll be dead within the hour and it'll be pretty painful. Uh, I'd like to give that one the Emperor's mercy if I have your permission, sir. Yes. So she just nods solemnly and uh, like looks at you hard and says, as for the other two, they're stable and uh, alive, but the one from Sergeant Ellis's squad, I believe his name is Hawkner, and then Ellis just sort of looks at her and nods slowly. I'm sorry, sir, but it doesn't look like he'll ever walk again. The last shot went straight through his uh, fort vertebrae and severed his spine. He's completely paralyzed. And then uh, Ellis just sort of uh, looks pretty glumly as well and uh, looks to Angel and says, he won't be much of a fighter then, and then she just sort of looks at him and says, unlikely, sir. He'll survive if we can get him back to the orbital uh, orbital fleet, uh, but it's likely they'll just discharge him on the next planet we get to. And he just sort of nods and says, well, at least he's alive. Uh, and then Angel just sort of nods again and says, as for the last one from Sergeant Milo's squad, he's uh, he took a light abrasion to the arm, some shrapnel, we've extracted it, and he should be okay in a few hours. It looks like he has a, something of a mild concussion, though, so he might not be good for the next uh, fight we get into if we don't give him a few days to recover. As for the rest of the fatalities, uh, Sergeant Ellis' squad is down two men, and Sergeant Milo's squad is down another two men. All in all, we've lost uh, just about nine men, sir. To hold against some fucking tanks. Thank you, Angel. So she just sort of nods and uh, says, if you don't mind, sir, I, I'd like to go check on Locke now. And he's, she sort of gets up and gets ready to leave and like does a short salute to all three of you and then starts to walk up. So Angel just comes in and like knocks on the door and uh, has a look at you, Locke, and she's like still covered in blood but slowly wiping it off herself. And then uh, she just says, uh, sir, uh, I prepared the uh, reports. Uh, for the casualties and fatalities here for you, and she just hands you like a small data slate. I've already made my report to the sergeant, uh, but that Medicaid from uh, Alice's squad, uh, he's quite good at what he did. Uh, he saved most of them, but uh, it looks like the Emperor's Mercy is going to have to be given to one of them. We could have used your help, to be honest. Yes, well, I can't be in so many places at once. My intelligence is a, <laughs> is a resource that is finite. Uh, you can actually get a companion skill where she can do Medicaid tests for you from any distance, which is quite nice. Yeah. yeah. So but she just a good job. she just sort of nods and says, "I did well enough." And then she just sort of looks at you and says, uh, "You look tired, sir." And then she just comes up and has a look at the uh, machines and says, uh, "Why don't you go take a rest, sir? And I'll take over for a while. It looks simple enough to control." Yes, this is the accelerometer. Accelerometer. <laughs> you can't just add names to things. <laughs> she doesn't know. It's the acceler accelerometer. This is the accelerometer. This is the flux drive. That's the temporal vortex. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. This is the black hole generator. Yeah. Don't press this one, this is the exterminatus button. Yeah. So she just sort of nods, like, pretending she understands, and she's like... Uh, so basically the crux of it is, if you push this lever, it goes forward. If you pull it back, it stops. And you just you sort might. of nod. Yeah. And she just sort of smiles and says, All right, well, go get some sleep, sir. And uh, she, like, you know, clearly wants you to leave. Thank you. Right. I have so a question. She takes over. So yeah. we could see the bombardment on the city from the... Administratum building, yeah. Right. How far away was that from us? Several miles. Like... Nearly 50 to maybe 100, it was hard to judge. Okay. Because what I want to do eventually is is to stop beyond that line. Yeah. At like and, the next station, yeah. Yeah. And try to see if we can find our friends. Well, if we're going at about 30 kilometers per hour and we've been going for this amount of time, then we should be able to work it out at my level of intelligence. Yeah, you, like, estimate you've already probably gone over the line, so wherever the next stop is uh, where you guys are going to end up. But for the last hour or so, uh, like, all the public train stops, if you know what I mean, have sort of ended, and now it's just been a long tunnel for, like, the last hour or so, if you know what I mean. Mm. So it looks like you've left the city primary, if you know what I mean, and you've gone into, like, the... uh, mountainside where the artillery is located and where your squad is likely fighting above the surface above you. Yeah, I, wa- I wanted to stop in the city. Oh, you want to stop in the city? Yeah, I wanted to stop in the city to check if... Okay, we well, the city... People. The city isn't like... well, If you get what I mean, like the artillery bombardment has moved on from the city, and it's like in the outskirts surrounding your guys in like a semicircle, if you know what I mean. And they're mm-hmm. fighting through the wilderness up into the mountains where the artillery is. No. So that's why there's no more stops, if you know what I mean, because like you're already out of bounds of the city. Well, poop. So, is there anything you guys want to do while you have a little bit of downtime? If there's like any ORP you guys want to do, or anything you want to ask me, or, like maybe doing an ammo check of what you guys have left between you might mm-hmm. be a good idea. Yeah, but long story short. Uh, one more guardsman is dead, so... Well, I've got seven frag grenades. Damn. Damn. I have three? Uh, I have two. Didn't you use a load to make frag mines? Or who gave all those grenades? I gave all of mine. Alright. I gave it crack one? Yeah. I gave nothing. <laughs> I gave my crack have... and some frags. I have the, the grenade launcher, so... Yeah. And the mortar is all out, right? Yep, yeah, mortar doesn't have any more rounds. Yeah. Do we heal more wounds from rest? Uh, yeah, I could say you'll like heal one wound if you need to heal one. You guys do manage to grab a few hours of uh, precious sleep. So, eventually, uh, it goes on for some time, and you finally manage to, uh, well, it starts slowing down, and uh, Angel sort of, like, comes walking out of the back of the uh, office and, like, sort of turns around the corner and, like, slaps it to wake anyone up who's, like, asleep and sort of looks at you, uh, Thermite, and says, Sir, uh, some lights have started blinking on the cabin. I think we're coming up to some sort of dead end or stop. I'm not sure. But, the you know, the maglev line is starting to slow down automatically. I'll... Oh. You know, wake up and say, um, "Well, what do what does the sign say? What what's uh, what's happening?" Well, she says, "Come on in here and have a look yourself." So, she points at the blinking red light in the cabin, and it clearly is like uh, 
tracking something and it says the like within the next couple of uh thousand meters uh it's going to reach uh line end if you know what i mean and instead of go- like the train is like slowly starting to slow down if you know what i mean mm-hmm. she just sort of like looks at you and says i didn't do anything sir i still have it on full throttle so we must be getting close to wherever the end of the line is yeah it's it's all right angel just be careful not to hit anything maybe stop us a click away from the end of the line so she just sort of nods and says all right i'll tell you when we're about uh, a kilometer away sir all right and I come out and well inform what's happening to everybody or just like the leaders the leaders so they can spread the message down the lines Okay, so Sentinel just sort of looks up and says, uh, he just like salutes both of you and says, Sirs, if uh, you'll allow me, I'll go uh, inform the rest of the uh, men to get ready and armed. Yeah. Yes, just be careful with that back carriage. Yeah, he just sort of nods and says, don't worry, sir, I'll keep an eye on Parks. And he uh, like, walks off, he comes over to you, Crater and the uh, Boomer, and it's like, Shakes you guys awake and says, Come on, man, open at him. Uh-huh. Or it stops coming up. It does the same to Voxbox. He just sort of like smacks Voxbox over the back of the head. He like yelps a bit, comes up and like shakes you, uh, Piker, and says, Come on, you lazy louts. The Emperor's work needs doing. Uh, time to get shot again. Vox just sort of gets up and like, you know brushes the sleep from his eyes and sort of like looks around and says, bloody hell it's never enough time to sleep in this crapple and he just sort of like walks up to you uh, lock and like shakes you and says, come on doc we may have need of you again quite soon the emperor's work is never done I uh, wake up, turn around to see him and then uh, see Piker look at his ugly ass scarred face and go, ah I thought you were the like the rotting corpse of my mother, and, uh, and just just like yawn. I'll explain your erection. Oh god! Immediately up. Oh. So Sentinel goes into the back carriage and just like starts shouting to the men to get them rallied, and uh, most of them seem to be doing what he says, and. Uh, you know, Angel just sort of shouts outside of the uh, carriage again and says, Sir, we're coming up on one click. Do you want me to stop it or should we keep going? Stop it. All right. So she stops the train. And it comes to a shuddering stop just inside uh, the cavern ahead of you. And the sound of, like, light dripping water returns again just outside and the train comes to halt she just sort of comes out and says we're about 900 meters away sir uh, I don't know whatever is ahead but it's too dark to see too far yes it's alright it's just that the maglev might will make more noise than we will and Alice just sort of uh, looks at you and says uh, we can't leave uh the men who are wounded here alone fit. We're going to need to leave a security detail to guard them. Maybe one or two men. I volunteer some of mine. I need your men <laughs> with me, Alice. Especially your Medicaid. All right, so Milo just pipes up and says, the wounded are mine as well, sirs. Uh, let me leave one of my men here, or two, whatever you decide. Yes, my love. Um, leave a few of your men here, but I also want you and your arms with us. Yeah, he just nods and says, I'll leave my corporal here. He'll look after them. He just sort of nods and salutes and goes off to organize like a security detail for the maglev train. Okay, so the rest of you are going to start walking up the train line, I guess, yeah? That's the plan? Mm-hmm. Like... I I go talk to Milo's corporal personally. 
and tell him, you know, that if trouble comes up to speed up the train to the end of the line and vox us. Yeah. Okay. That and sense. yeah. And if the end of the line is secure or when the end of the line is secure for him to bring the train up. All right. So the wounded are closer to us. Okay. So Sentinel comes back to you and says, so are we taking the rest of the men up the line, sir, or are we sending in a scout party ahead? Well, he, like, boxes you. Send, send in Parrox to scout. You really don't like Parrox, do you? Uh... And if he moans, tell him to come to me. So, uh, Parks, uh, you know, you can hear like a shout or two coming from the train behind you. But a few minutes later, Parks and his squad of men uh, leave to move on ahead. Him and like what's left of his men. Which is like four men at this stage. So you see him like walking by you and he just sort of like grits his teeth as he walks past. And his men sort of like grunt a little, but like they walk on ahead, activate their glow lamps, and you see like the, you know, pale pillars of light coming out of sort out of their glow lamps, like streaking ahead, like walking off into the tunnel, and then maybe three, four hundred meters ahead, like they're too dim to see anymore. And he and his men are walking ahead of you guys. And then like a few minutes later, you hear a Vox come in from him, and he says, "It's just a tunnel for hundreds of meters, sir. Some of it's collapsed." bits of water and uh, uh, ceramics from the tiled roof have collapsed in on the head, but it's nothing too bad. It's mostly clear as uh, the rest of the line. I'll vox back to you when we we go another 500 meters. Very well, Parrot. We'll be behind you shortly. Yeah, so Sentinel just comes up to you and uh, you know, while Alice goes to organize the rest of his men and he says, uh, we're running a bit of low on ammunition, sir. A lot of the grenades got used in that uh, hold-off against uh, that infantry battalion uh, back at the Administratum building. Most people's charge packs and uh, you know rounds are still intact, but uh, we're a little light on the explosives, if you know what I mean. Well, if this is a siege cannon we're coming up on then they should have more artillery more explosives for us I don't think they'll mind if we borrowed some so easy just comes up while he's like coming up to check on uh, Feth and he like hears you talking as well and he just sort of says like out of nowhere he just says one word listen and then like pauses for a moment as if he's waiting for you all to listen as well you guys don't hear anything. I listen. I will try to listen. Mm -hmm. You can roll awareness if you want. I'll re-roll that. All right. Okay, so after a while you realize what Easy was trying to get at when he told you to listen. You can't hear anything except the, like, the dripping of water and like the shudder of, uh, you know, the old ventilation system and, like, sort of uh, old gases being pressed through the uh, tunnel around you. You don't hear any sounds of guns or artillery fire or anything like that. And Easy just sort of looks at you and says, if this is where those big guns were firing from, sir, why don't we hear them? Maybe then we need to move further ahead easy. But if this is the end of the line, uh, we'll have to do it by foot. What if it's a, a laser artillery? That wouldn't make any noise. <laughs> well, it isn't fat. I saw it with my own eyes what it was. Well, we didn't hear the sound of the shells landing, so why would we hear the sound of the shells being fired from the same depth? Well, if you're a lot closer, you you tend to hear like the sound of artillery getting fired. Okay, 
I thought just the sound of like artillery, like exploding. Well, even if it was only like a kilometer above you, you'd hear like the shuddering of like shells being fired by massive artillery. You know? Okay. All right. So you guys wait in silence for another ten or so minutes, and then uh, another like static and slightly broken communication because about a kilometer is as far as micro beads go comes back from Sergeant Parks and he just sort of like uh, he's like whispering and he's also a bit static and he just says uh, found something sir there's dim lights ahead the tracks sort of end in some sort of station of some kind but it looks military rather than civilian and he just sort of like breaks up a bit again and says it's dark in here it doesn't look like there's much power and he just sort of like uh, you know you hear like a sound in the distance and he's just like we're going in to invest it and then like it just ends if you know what I mean Either he's gone out of uh, communication range, or he's been jammed or something, but like the, the line just breaks, if you know what I mean. Motherfucker. Well, if he dies, it's not a big deal, but we'll lose surprise. Uh, well, time to move out, gentlemen. Okay. So you gather up everyone but the wounded and the two guys guarding them, and go after yep. parks. All the while, I'm trying to talk to barracks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just get this organized for you. Okay. So eventually even the dripping of the tunnel goes away and it just becomes like complete silence. And you guys uh, end up uh, here. So you can all see that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the tunnel ends beside what appears to be like another maglev train, but this one was like a heavy cargo transport rather than like a personnel transport or a public transport. And the building around here, it's definitely come to like a dead end of some kind. And in front of you, there's definitely another like station of some kind, but this one looks much more uh, military. Most of the glow lamps on the walls are non-functioning or in some sort of like low power, uh, you know, low power mode, if you know what I mean, like they're not getting enough energy from genitoriums or something like that, and you guys are, you know, you just walk in here with all of you guys, uh, you know, spread out, you know, checking their corners every time they move, and yeah, what do you want to do? Um, all the while, we were trying to, we were not talking about, yeah. Yeah, he, Anything? all he got back was static, yeah. Uh, if he's dead, fuck him. This appears to be the uh, other station he was talking about. There's no sign of combat or like carbon scoring or bullet holes or you know expanded rounds or anything on the ground. And uh, there's no sign of blood or you know distant combat. It's in fact it's like eerily silent along here. If you know what I mean. Um. But you guys We're still do, in the ground, yeah, you do hear a sound. Though. You can hear that, right? No. Yes. It's quite low, so you'll need to like. Okay. Oh yeah, I hear that. Yeah. So every now and then, like the whole complex seems to like shudder slightly. And you can hear the sound of some very large caliber rounds being fired maybe a kilometer or two above you, if you know what I mean. In like long barrages, and it can be nothing other than the artillery barrage. Well, easy. Here's the, here's the artillery. Um, well... So I'll get rid of that sound, because there's no point in going over it again. Oh, I also forgot to play this while we were on the train. 
Oh. Oh. Am I the fat controller? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that was the. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Have you guys seen like the Thomas the Tank Engine rap mashup thing? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's oddly hilarious how it blends in with like almost every rap. It's like. <laughs> oh. But anyway, uh, yeah, you guys are in this like abandoned, deserted station in some sort of what appears to be military installation of some kind. And, like, the artillery of the heretics is definitely, like, a kilometer or two above you, and uh, you every now and then hear, like, the distant thunder of, like, a very large caliber shell being, like, launched into the sky somewhere. And uh, Parks isn't picking up, but you do see, like, the odd trace of what appears to be, like, footprints in the, uh, you know, the ground that's covered in dust and stuff below you. If this is, like, an enemy installation, it they, it doesn't look like they've been in this part of it for a very long time. In fact, it doesn't look like anyone's been here for years, if you know what I mean. Well, that's that's good. You know. But that means this wasn't a place where they took the shells off. Correct. Yeah. Um. Well, just search around. Let's see if we can find that motherfucker. Or the way up. So Alice just, like, uh, shouts to his men and organizes them and says, I'm going to lead my men further along the tracks and see where they end uh, fit. You and your men should head into the station. Yeah, just be careful, Alice. I don't want to come back to rescue you again. He just nods and says, maybe I'll be rescuing you this time, friend. I hope so. Seeing his men start walking off, and uh, Milo sort of turns to you, well, like, you know, shouts to you and says, uh, Sir, I'm, me and my men will secure the station if you don't mind. Uh, we need a good rear guard just in case. We need to make a hasty getaway. I don't like the look of this place. Me either, Milo. Uh, do it. Make sure everything's secure. Uh, call in your corporal. Tell him to bring up the train. So he just nods and says, Of course, sir. And uh, he and his men like, crawl up to the edge of the station and like start fanning out and just like covering the station. Alright, so that leaves you guys to go uh, straight into the station then. Yeah. Which way? Because I can't, I don't see much. It's like straight ahead where they are. You just crawl up the tracks and over like the other train and up. Oh. Yeah, you don't see much because it's dark right now. So, I put on my photo visors. That gives me dark sight. Yeah, it gives you dark sight within a radius. It doesn't give you complete vision. So, yeah. So the room you're in now seems to be an old storage room, and it's full of what appears to be old rations, ammunition, and things like that. Ammunition, so you, you could say. Maybe... Oh. Yeah, you could even scour this for like some, maybe some working packs. Um, yeah, well, the majority of them seem to be just like normal bullets for like stubbers and auto guns and things like that. But there is, you'd have to like search through like with an actual like awareness test to see if you can find mm -hmm. uh, something compatible with your guns, if you know what I mean. But I... does the uh, track of footprint footprints come through here? Yes. Okay. At least we get like a plus ten when we're in like tunnelly dark environments. Yes. We're navigating. Yeah. Oh, I would have potentially found something. All right. So you guys like spread out and start searching, like you know, wiping the dust off these cases to see if anything is useful to you. Yeah, you get a plus ten to awareness and navigate surface. Went underground. So yeah, it would have been 0 0.2 then. Well, what were you looking for exactly? Uh, ammo. Just for like what kind of weapon? Uh, uh the mortar. <laughs> There's no shells for mortar, no. <sighs> well, I was looking for anything ogren proof. 
Yeah, so you do find some ripper rounds if you want to take them. Oh, goody. How That's many? One, one clip of ripper rounds. I am looking for crack grenades. Yes, you do find a box of crack grenades with two crack grenades still inside the box. Though they look quite old. Well, we'll test them when the time comes. Mm -hmm. So this whole place is kind of old and quite eerie. And, uh, yeah. Let me see if I can find any decent background music for this. Actually. Is there any decent fucking sound for this? <laughs> no, that's not a good one, I'll be sure. Uh, okay, never mind. Yeah, there's, there's not good sounds like I was looking for earlier. Alright, so you guys are still in here. Uh, what do you want to do? You're still inside the storage room. Well, I'll follow you know, Perix's tracks. Yeah, so like it looks like his man like walked around here for a while, probably grabbed some ammo as well, if they found any, and then walked this way. Yeah, let's go. Is there actually a tracking skill? I think there is, isn't there? There is. We have yeah, a tracker. You might, you might need to do that at some point. Oh yeah, your ogre is tracker. <laughs> yeah. A, v a very good tracker. So, fat. Take point. Lead us to that bastard. Yeah, so if you want to do a tracking test for me, Fett. That's survival, right? Yeah. Uh, flat, right? Yeah, it would definitely be fun, yeah. If you're looking at tracks and the dust, basically. Yeah, so nice. it looks like it looks like they just started heading north uh, in this direction, keeping a pretty tight close quarters squad. So. Yep, so you come out straight into the face of what appears to be a Lehman Ross. What the fuck? Shotgun. <laughs> and this one actually bears the Imperial Aquila, so it's very likely that these were abandoned when Trion was uh, given over to the uh, Halion hegemony, if you know what I mean, like yeah. decades ago, like about a decade or two ago. So it looks like you guys are in a old abandoned Imperial base that the, you know, Hegemony never found or wasn't quite sure about these lower levels. It's unsure which way, but yep, this is definitely a Lehman Rust that has the Imperial Aquila on it. It has the mark of the uh, Trion PDF forces. So, Well, this might come in handy. But first, let's find that bastard. Yeah, so it looks like you just kept going north from here. Okay, so do you want to do another tracking for me, Fett? Oh, I totally know where he went. It's very easy to follow. <laughs> Where'd he go, Fat? So you're pretty sure he went uh, east. Right, he definitely went to the east. Well, wow. take point. Is there any point in trying to, like, activate these demon rushes or anything? 
We don't well, have I mean, the time. Do you want to have a tank? It's up to you. I, I kind of would like to, but I mean, like, if if the if Fermite well, doesn't want to... Little. It's a chimera. I'm surprised Fett knows which, which way is east. Look, look, oh, sir, I've got a very good sense of direction. So, Fett, <laughs> Fett you've lost the tracks. They don't seem to have been going east after all, but yeah, these are coming areas again with the Imperial Aquila with the mark of the Trion PDF forces. Right, so he started flying somewhere around <laughs> here. <laughs> Spontaneously grew wings that the Emperor gave him and uh, started flared. flying, Fett. Right. You lost the tracks, didn't you? No. No. It's the, okay. the, the, the tracks load here, and then he starts flying around. How am I supposed to track somebody who flies? People don't fly. There. But his role says they did. His role is shit. Well, it's pretty obvious what happened here, right? So you you hear a crack of like transmission over your Vox and it's a bit staticky and you're not quite sure what it was and then Sentinel just sort of like hands you the receiver and says, I think it's from uh, Sergeant Ellis, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll I take the Vox come. Yeah, stop walking around for a second, people. So inside that room that uh, you've gone into, Boomer, and that Piker was outside of, it uh, feels seems to be filled with promethium to uh, run the engines of the war machines you guys see in the main room before you. All right. Is that what these barrels are? Promethium. Yeah. Promethium is basically the Imperium's word for oil or gas or anything that makes machines work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like ev everything is literally just called promethium if it yeah. like makes engines go basically. It's fun because it acts like napalm. So you hear a crackling transmission from Alice, and he just sort of like balks over and says, "Fit, are you there?" Yes, Alice. Okay, he just says, "Me and my squad moved on ahead, and we came into some sort of uh, janitorium room. Most of them seem to be uh, decommissioned or without power, but some of them still seem to be serviceable. Uh, we found one that still seems to be marginally working, and I'm about to reactivate the power. Okay." Get yes. some light in here. Okay. Do it. So he just says, hold on to your horses. Uh, you hear like a, you know, crackling sound as like a generator starts to start up again. And boom, lights go on. Ah, you guys can see a lot more now. I still have a circle around me. It's bright. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to change if you all give me a sec. Oh, goody. It was so dark before. Uh, I think that's almost everybody. Except for Mita. Okay, you can all see now, right? Yes. Now it's slightly lighter, maybe we can have a little bit of a another search. Right, well, make sure you pay attention to the ceiling, because it can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Humans do not fly like that, fat. I think I... Uh... This is a basilisk, by the way, an unpainted one. It looks like it was being given a fresh paint when uh, it was abandoned. I think I see some... Uh... Racks of maybe mortars or shells over to the west. Oh, yeah? Yep, there's definitely something over to the west. Let's go look at the west then. Because all that Promethean gives me ideas. Pyromaniac ideas. Oh, the other west. Great, great sense of direction, yeah. But... So you get in there, and there are racks upon racks of uh, ammunition for tanks, mortar shells, and everything else you could, your heart could desire. 
basically it's like the shells are massive though so they're for like earth shaker cannons if you know what i mean so they're for like basilisks and lehman russes and chimeras if you know what i mean this is basically like mm -hmm. vehicle ammunition well, even these smaller ones here well i mean the mortar is smaller than like a battle cannon which is what the right. lehman russes right. use the shell wouldn't fit in the mortar so yeah. Okay, so we basically have like six tanks. How how many people do we require for each tank? Three. At least one driver for each. Uh, I'm bigger, so I can drive two. And <laughs> we, the thing is, we don't have operate the skill, which yeah, none of you knows how yeah. to drive tanks. We don't know how to drive them. Maybe we when we meet up with. The rest of the... Your squad's not a uh, tank regiment, unfortunately. Yeah. Just put it in neutral and push it. Yeah. Well, my idea was, you know, put it in neutral and push it. But full of promethium into a mountain. Filled <laughs> with enemy artillery. Yeah. Yes. Well, it would be a very big bang. Mm-hmm. Would probably so, make some people happy in here. Do you want to do another tracking test, Fett? Now that the lights are on, you'll probably have a plus 20 to it. So. Uh, I, I mean, I guess. Give it another shot, Fett, please. People don't fly. And yeah, you guys hear the sound of, like, uh, footsteps, and uh, Alice and the squad come up from the site where you guys were. He starts having a look over all the layman Russes, and he goes, "Emperor, be praised." And he just sort of uh, like sees you, sent, uh, you know, sentinel on Thermite. And he walks up to you guys, and he's just like, uh, "Seems we uh, stumbled upon something quite interesting." Uh, Fet, and he has, sort of looks at the tanks and says, "Looks like this is an old PDF base or something from before the uh, Heretic takeover." Yes, we are well. I don't know. I don't think I should say we are lucky because we can cannot use them. Yeah, in fact, you're you're pretty sure they just started flying. Pretty yeah. Sure. Look, look, I've said before it's it's pretty obvious what happened here. So I mean, I don't know why you have been well, still looking. Well, Alice came back. He didn't see Parrox when he came back. The other rooms have no way out, so I would suggest the only way they could go is north. Fat. It's very possible that he flew off to the north. I'm not saying it isn't. I just can't track somebody who flies. What is that such a difficult concept? I'm looking at Easy like, please give me a break. So Easy just sort of like pats him on the shoulder and says, we'll go find them when they flew north, but it's okay. And uh, Alice just sort of looks at you and says, well, they're not to the south. Uh, all there is is there is a series of uh, genitoriums. Only one of them was still working, so we uh, turned it on again. We don't know how long it's going to last, though. It looks like it's in pretty bad shape, so if we're going to make the best of the uh, conditions we currently have, we should make a quick move. I stopped in with uh, Milo and his boys before we headed in this direction. They seem alright, but a bit spooked, uh, but as soon as the lights came on, they felt better for it. I could hear the train coming up as well, so if we need to, we can make a quick run back as well. Good. Um, I'll continue moving north. Try to look for barracks, see what uh, where he ends up. All right, so Alice just sort of says, you want me and my man to see if we can scrounge anything up from those ammo stores nearby while you uh, scout ahead looking for Parax? Yes, try to get as many, as much as you can out of them. He just Any medical says, supplies? Yeah, he, yeah, his like Medicaid comes up as well and says, yeah, sir, we're running quite low on Medicaid supplies. The recent uh, casualties have uh, hit us pretty hard. He just sort of nods and says, see if you can scrounge up anything resembling an infirmary around here. And uh, he and his man like start spreading out. And he sort of like looks back to you before he wanders off again and says, good luck to you, Fit. If you need uh, help, just uh, give me a shout on the Vox and I'll be there as soon as I can with as many men as I can bring. 
Will do. All right. So you guys are headed north then. Yep. Would there be any chance of us being able to get above ground and uh, maybe the comms would be blocked? They were blocking just in the city, weren't they? They were being jammed in like a long range, if you know what I mean. Okay. Like short range communicators are working, but they're staticky. Uh, but long range was completely like anything over a kilometer has been blocked right now. Do you think he has a jetpack or like some kind of a like soiker to make him fly? Soiker to make him fly. I don't think the Thermian regiments have soikers. Fat. So probably a jetpack then. Well, I didn't see one on him when he left. I think well, he took one from the stores. Yeah, he must have stolen it on his way. That means we probably missed a storage of jetpacks somewhere. We should go back. Jump packs. I'm not called jetpacks in this, but yeah. Um. It's actually a possibility, because there is jump packs, but only certain regiments use them. So, but... <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Generally, the big voice in the sky is... told you. Yeah. That's the only one who can actually hear the GM, like, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's his superpower. Uh, so, what was he going to say? Um... All right, yeah, there's uh, something I wanted to discuss with you guys, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to play anymore today because I have to go uh, out a bit earlier than I thought I did today. Uh, like, I was going to head off at about half nine, but it looks like I might be going a bit earlier. Um, so we're going to have to cut it short today, all right? Uh, okay. But what I wanted to discuss before I left, because I've just remembered it now, um, my Shadowrun group is having a bit of difficulty playing on Wednesdays. So what I wanted, and some of them are, well, a couple of them are in this group as well. Like Chris is in this group. Yeah. Um, Harriel and Aaron are all in that Shadowrun group I'm playing with. I wanted to know if you guys would be okay with swapping the times. So like Shadowrun would be on Sunday and you guys would be on Wednesday from now on, which means we'll play this Wednesday, if that's okay with you guys, at 6 o'clock. Unless you guys are streaming or something out there, I don't know. No, um, I'm going to have to see at work. Uh, because you know we're switching to our summer hours now, and I'm. All right. I I might come home with like just enough time to to start the game, or you know. Well, we can do it another day if you want. Like I I don't mind. Like, well, I mean, like you know, Monday through Friday, it's it's that's going to be the case. But... Well, when is everybody when is everybody ready? Like, or what day is you available? Like. I GM on Mondays. Okay, so Mondays no go. What about Tuesdays? I'm fine for Tuesdays. We could I'm even good. we could even play at like seven on Tuesdays if you want to do. It's not too bad for me. I don't think Tuesdays will work for me, unfortunately. Like okay. when like Wednesday's fine. It's just six o'clock is pro like I'm gonna. Or have how about see. seven GTM then? Or like even six thirty would probably be okay. But I mean, I'll have okay. to check. Maybe six is gonna be fine. I just it'll depend when I go to work on Tuesday. Like I'll find out. Well. If if uh, if this is hinging on your schedule, then you check, you know, mm. first, yeah. and then you update us. Yeah, because if it's yeah. literally good for everyone else. And the thing is, before I left work on Friday, I asked my boss's boss, like, because my boss wasn't there. So I asked my boss's boss, I was like, uh, so who's closing at work, uh, you know, when we're, our summer schedule starts? And she was like, I have no idea, because Iceland. So, all right. Well, so I'm not gonna know until Tuesday. All right. Well, just get back to us whenever you can. But um, mm -hmm. we will need, probably need to be switching to another day because I want to move Shadow on to this day if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All right. But we will play like whenever we can uh, this week if that's all right with everybody. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Sorry, this was cut a bit short, but I'd like to make up for it by playing a bit earlier next week as well. Yeah. So. All right, um, so that's where we're going to leave it for now. You guys do get some experience, though, because you managed to hold off those guys uh, before you retreated, so you get 200 experience, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a good thing we're doing this on uh, YouTube, because now we can just do it in segments. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. yeah. That puts us at 800 total XP, right? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it probably depends on if you're a specialist. If you're a specialist, that's yeah. less. Yeah. I'm at uh, 100... No, 1100 uh, total. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I need to go in a few minutes, uh, but yeah. All right, so um, it's a tentative Wednesday then, and I'm going to let Steve and the Shadowrun group know that we're going to try and find Sundays then, all right? Okay. All right. Okay, so talk to you guys later. Thank you. See you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone who played. Thank you, everyone on YouTube who watched. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. There's a new video released every day. Bye, everyone.